So, all right. Well, welcome. Uh, my name is Desiree Mangendog. For those of you who don't know me, is there anyone who does not know me in here? <laughs> put it, put in the chat if you don't know me. Um, if this is new material, because I, I want to know if I need to do a brief little intro of like what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're brand new, please go ahead and put that like I'm brand new. New material. Okay. So I'll do a mini background. Oh, we got enough brand new. I'll do a mini background and you know how I'm using the essential oils. And um, so I've been in Chinese medicine for 17 years. Oh, we got a lot of brand new. And um, I went into it early on because I just knew I was meant to be a healer of some sort. And I'm half Korean, half Irish. I actually Korean is my first language, even though I was born in Anaheim, California, where Disneyland is. But my grandmother raised me in the beginning and um, I didn't learn English until I went to preschool. So it's very much so in my heritage, this Asian medicine, I, I grew up with taking herbs and, you know, drinking nasty things and eating nasty things for the sake of health. And, um, and so plant medicine is just absolutely my jam. It's my passion. And I have a dream to bring the understanding of plants into the West. And we in the Western culture tend to not have a deep connection with um, with food, with with plants. I know that this is an anomaly here in this group because you are all essential oil users. But for the most part, uh, we don't really understand even kitchen medicine. And when there is an ailment that we're going through, right? Like, uh, for example, when I would get a, a cold of some kind, my mother would get the roots of green onions and just cut off just the root part, the white and the little roots, and slice up ginger, right? And then boil that and then simmer for a half an hour and you drink that and it would just knock things out. So we know how to do basic kitchen medicine. Um, so in addition to that, I really love to teach the energetic and emotional effects of these essential oils. And that is my zone of genius. I studied a particular style of acupuncture called classical five element acupuncture. And in this philosophy of this style is that 99% of illnesses are rooted in the spirit. So our diseases, our actual physical de diseases are mostly coming from the way that energy is moving or not moving within our bodies. And one of the things that moves energy within our bodies is emotions. Ooh, Robin says she can't hear. Um, maybe, Courtney, you can ch uh, chat to Robin. Oh, she wrote to me privately. Ooh, Robin Adams. Let's see. Okay, hopefully, Courtney, you can deal with that. <laughs> okay, so, because everybody else can hear. So, um, yeah, everybody else can hear. I think there's something, an issue with Robin Adams. Anyways, uh, where was I? Where was I? I was like, I don't want somebody to not hear me. <laughs> um, so, yes, so it's our emotions. It's thoughts, yes. So there is definitely a cycle between thoughts and emotions, but I, I have a little bit of a criticism with uh, a lot of the mindset changes and, you know, the positivity movement, which is, you know, good and fine, but however, they're kind of missing a huge part of the equation. It's like taking the yin yang symbol and saying, oh, yang is good and yin doesn't exist, right? That's just not truth. That's not reality. So we have to look at both sides. You have your thoughts, but then you have all the feelings surrounding the thoughts. And honestly, the emotions, those feelings are affecting 90% of your decision making, your behaviors, your reactions. So it's very important that you mind your emotions too, which is in a way you're minding your frequencies. All of those emotions can be measured. Every single feeling has an emotional signature. So what's so awesome about the essential oils is that they have this ability to, they pair, like I'll, I'll pick particular essential oils to, um, to connect with a certain type of frequency, a certain type of emotion, and it just changes it so well. So there is definitely an art to this, and I'm just gonna share you a little bit of that art, and we're gonna keep it super light and super simple so that this is an easy protocol that you can do on your own whenever you feel like you need to. And you know what, one second, I think I have, these are on the wrong side. And so it's like falling out of my ears. <laughs> okay, here we go. So 
that's me. That's my background. So we are going to talk about these essential oils in a very unique way. Um, just so you know that I use the essential oils as my needles. I use them as my needles. So they move energy so quickly. What it, when you look at an essential oil, it, what it's doing is actually capturing high powered sunlight energy, just like tea tree. We're gonna talk about tea tree today. Tea tree is very close to the equator. Um, a lot of the citruses are close to the equator. So they're exposed to high powered sunlight energy. And even when we take herbs like Chinese herbs or even Western herbs, right? And we're cooking them to drink them as a tea, what we're actually extracting is the essential oil. So how cool is it that we have these pure, pristine, beautiful, powerful, potent essential oils at our fingertips that move stagnant energy just like that. So, all right, here we go. Um, or is it possible to use oils incorrectly? Like I have done some in the I'm Fabulous, but didn't really notice a big difference. It's very possible. So I'm going to teach you a sequence and a process. So maybe you'll be able to um, go look through the I Am Fabulous book with a different eye and what you should use first, second, and third. Okay. Mm, you must be a manifesting generator. You're so cute. I do know human design, but I'm just a generator. I know. I wish I was a manifesting generator. Um, so next slide here. Um, this is, oh, I just kind of talked about this, but here we go. <laughs> so essential oils are what move energy. And there is this statement, this line that is just the core of our understanding in Chinese medicine is that when there is free flow, there is no pain. When there is free flow, there is no pain. So when there is no free flow, that's when you have pain. So the entire like point of being a practitioner in this medicine is to create free flow of energy. There is a specific pace that we're aiming for. We don't want it to move too fast and erratic, right? And we don't want it to move too slow and get stuck and stagnant. So we are aiming for the smooth flow, a rhythmic flow of energy in all of our organs and our meridians and our chakras. And let me tell you, these essential oils make it happen so well. Um, so free flow creates health and stagnation is what creates destruction. And with free flow, okay, this is where we're gonna get clarity. It's when you are stuck is when you don't have clarity. And it is critical that you are clear in what you're doing, where you're going, why you're doing it, how you're doing it, all of these aspects in order to create change in your life. And you can go from, I don't think this is possible. I'm not sure if I can do it. I'm, I don't know if I'm good enough. Oh, I'm not so positive it'll work out. You can go from that to like, oh my gosh, I think it's actually going to work, <laughs> right? That's what happened with me in doTERRA. I think it's actually going to work. <laughs> so, okay, here we go. This is the process. There are three essential steps for effective transformation. Now I have, you know, gleaned this wisdom through my experience of Chinese medicine. And I've basically narrowed it down. Like this is really what we're doing when we look at formulas and when we're looking at acupuncture point protocols, we go through these three main steps. So first we clear the obstruction. We clear clear the insult, we clear the pathogen, we clear the stagnation, right? We clear that excess. And then after we do the clearing work, then we go in and nourish. So whatever you do clear and move out, like, oh, I'm not good enough. Let's say you just clear out, I'm not good enough. Then you have to replace it with, oh my gosh, I am, I'm more than enough. I am excellent, right? So you have to um, bring in the opposite. And so there are particular oils that we use for clearing. There are particular oils that we use for the nourishing aspect. And then there is this third section that people just don't talk about for some reason um, is harmonizing. Harmonizing. If you don't harmonize a blend, a protocol, then it is very easy that that clearing thing, whatever you did to clear is very fleeting and just, it's good. You're going to go right back into the old pattern. So if you don't nourish and if you don't harmonize, then you will return back 
to the original stuck pattern. So these two other steps in a lot of places, they don't discuss this concept. Without this, you're just wasting your time and energy. So, okay. So here is a five step protocol that I am going to share with you on how um, to clear so you can or clarify to create, okay? So these five steps are going to give that clarity for you so that creation and manifestation becomes easier. So you're going to notice that within this, you're, you're going to see those three steps that I talked about, right? Back here, clear, nourish, and harmonize. Clear, nourish, and harmonize. So we're going to first actually clear some noise, and I'll explain what that is in a second, and then clear confusion. Those two are going to be the clear section. And then the second two is going to be the nourish section. Excuse me. So that's going to be turning up your truth and creating that vision and plan that you have in mind, um, or even just uncovering it if you're not sure what it is. And then, so that's the nourish section, right? This is adding to building up. And then harmonize is calibrate at the very end. We want to make sure that you have the art and the skill of continually calibrating with your external environment and your internal environment. So all of these steps make it very easy to be clear and that you can move forward in your creation process effectively. Um, awesome. Okay, so clear the noise. Let's talk about what this is. I know you're going to see some notes here. Don't get overwhelmed. I'm just going to talk about it. You guys can take notes. <laughs> so clear the noise. What is noise? So I found a few definitions for you. So noise, it's loud, confused, senseless shouting or outcry. Um, also a sound that is unpleasant that causes disturbance and a sound or sounds that are unpleasant or unwanted. So let's uh, bring it down to practicality. What is noise out there? Now, we live in a ridiculously connected information overload society. Infobesity is a thing now. It's actually an epidemic, just like obesity is an epidemic. Or Yes, I think it's an epidemic in the US, correct. Even globally, we're seeing it more and more. But infobesity, that's more like a pandemic, okay? Now, now, when we get information, like our systems, our spirit is not used to breaking down and digesting this much information a day. Like you honestly can just sit in a city without talking to anyone or looking at your phone. And if you're really sensitive and you're sensitive to phone signals and Wi-Fi and you're just like in the middle of this, pool of Wi-Fi signals, right? Your spirit and your body is also processing that information. So we need to take some extreme measures right now using things like essential oils that are so powerful to regularly filter out and clear out the clutter. So anytime you get info, you're, you're listening to a podcast, you're reading a book, right? You're watching a TV show, you're having a conversation, you're text messaging, you're on social media, you're on Facebook Messenger, you're on Instagram DM, right? This is so much information <laughs> that you have to organize and, and sort through. And that is overwhelming to the system. How, how can you possibly Honestly, how can you possibly hear your own voice amidst all of that noise? How can you hear your own voice? So for me, this is something I do on the daily, every single day, and I have certain essential oils that I use for this purpose, but I'm gonna just teach you one that is accessible and easy, and that is tea tree. So if you think about tea tree essential oil, 
This is antibacterial, antiparasitic, antiviral, right? Antifungal. It has a lot of antis in there. So what it does is it starts to detach from you the things that are antis, the things that would cause stagnation and harm and destruction and use you as a host essentially and take advantage of you. So you want to use tea tree on top of the head Okay. as well as inside of the elbow creases, and I'll explain that too, but the top of the head inside the elbow creases, you can use the touch. You can use it with fractionated coconut oil. It doesn't have to be neat. I use it neat often, but I also always carry my tea tree touch. I don't go anywhere without this because, you know, when you go to places like convention, right, it's a little bit noisy. Um, energetically and emotionally, it's very noisy. So this is just a handy dandy. It's kind of like lavender is your basic first aid oil. To me, this is your basic clear the noise essential oil. So why do we put on top of head and inside of elbow creases? So top of the head, literally the crown, just right at the top. This is a, a space where essential oils will distribute throughout the body very quickly all throughout. So when you're wanting to get, you know, a, a full all system clean out, <laughs> I like to put on the top of the head. Another area that I talked about, ooh, Courtney, can you check if someone, do I have to do that because I'm a host? Hold on, guys. There's somebody who is, mm, who is not muted and I'm hearing background noise. If anyone knows who it is, then types in the chat. <laughs> I'm gonna. Uh, oh, where are you? Where are? Oh, it's Robin Adams. Okay, muted now. All right, cool. Thank you. Okay, screen share. Perfect. Okay, thank you, everybody. Um, okay, so the inside of the elbow creases just like so bilateral, bilaterally both sides please and in here we have a couple of channels you have the lungs the pericardium and the heart channel that runs through the inside of the arm of the forearm and we, we also not only have the mental noise but then we have the emotional noise that is paired along with it. So this helps to release those stagnant feelings um, in the chest, so in the lung space as well as the heart space. And you will feel it instantly. I actually feel it instantly whenever I use Meluca. There are other places you can put it. You know, I, I always say trust your intuition. I'm just giving you some, some general guidelines here as to where to apply. But if you feel like you need to put some on your belly, then go put some on your belly and you, or your chest, just right on your chest, and you will feel this freeing sensation. It is so addicting <laughs> because like, just like how um, food that we eat today, right, is so processed. We have so much additives, excess sugar. Like it's almost like we have to drink lemon essential oil, the pollution in the air. We're always consuming some pollutants, uh, with uh, with the food and the air and the water. So because of the vast amount of toxicity that's out in our environment, just because of our modern lifestyle, I want you to think that energetically that's happening too. So we have to be on top of it. And this is why so many people are dealing with uh, depression and anxiety and just struggling to be motivated and have energy and, and um, have like ambition. And uh, it's just, it's, it's literally weighing us down, bogging us down. So energetic, emotional maintenance, I also call it like energetic hygiene, is just as important as cleaning your home. You don't just, you know, not clean your toilet or your kitchen or your bathtub, right? So why wouldn't you do this emotionally? You have to do this. Oh, I mean, you don't have to. I don't tell people what to do. <laughs> but, but I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. So this is first step. This is first step of clearing, clear the noise. The second step is clearing confusion. All right. So let me tell you, indecision is the death of creation. Indecision is the death of creation. It is important important that you make decisions, don't him and ha, even if you make a decision that may not be right, 
that's better. <laughs> that's better. Just go, just decide because in that process, you will learn if it is right or not. For example, I tried homeschooling. I learned that is not right for me. Unfortunately, you kind of have to do it right now. Um, I, I lived the RV life for seven months, 200 square feet with five humans doesn't work for me. I'm not a tiny house girl. I really wish I was. I totally admire people who do tiny home life and I admire the homeschoolers. I do. So I tried it out and then I learned it wasn't right for me and hence we moved to Texas. <laughs> so, um, so clearing confusion is a very important. Oh, do you do these right after? Yep, you can do these right after the other. Yeah, so you're going to do the whole five-step protocol in one sitting. Any alternatives to tea tree colleagues don't like the smell. Um, you can use oh, as close to tea tree. I do like lemongrass. That's a good one. Um, manuka, I probably won't like the smell of manuka then. Um, a pedigree sometimes is really helpful as well too. Do you do this protocol every day? Okay, so um, I don't design things to do every day, forever and ever, amen. Um, it just depends on the intensity in which you are experiencing confusion and lack of motivation. Do you all hear my children? Oh my goodness, I feel like I hear my kids. I might have to go say, be quiet. <laughs> okay, so, um, so you can do this. Some people, you can do three days back to back. They're fine. Okay, I'm gonna go tell them to be quiet. I'm sorry, one second, okay? Okay, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Sorry about that. That would drive me nuts, so. Okay, so you could do this, you know, once a day for three days, maybe once a day, five days would be the max that you would need it because it's a pretty powerful protocol that you should experience some result. Um, indecision is the death of creation. So make mistakes, everyone. I really, really want to encourage you to not be afraid to mess up and make as many mistakes as possible because that's how you learn. I have made a ridiculous amount of expensive mistakes and that's okay. <laughs> and that's okay because I have learned. Um, oh, good. You're good at making mistakes. Perfect. And of course, uh, I have to plug in my computer so we don't die. My computer doesn't die. Sorry about that. Okay, so clearing confusion, we are going to use fennel and lemon. So I wanna discuss energetic phlegm. Oh, you don't see that at the bottom, there we go. Energetic phlegm buildup. Now, when you have all of that noise, right, and all of that nasty that's just coming in into your field on a regular basis, then sometimes um, phlegm, there's a phlegm buildup. It could be actual physical, literal phlegm, Okay, it could be physical, literal phlegm, absolutely. But we also have this concept in Chinese medicine called energetic phlegm. We have even like phlegm misting the mind. So you can use digestin instead of fennel, by the way. I was going to definitely mention that. But this phlegm, this, think about the nature of phlegm. It's thick, it's sticky, it's gunky, it's yucky. It's, it's very like hard to move through. And so you can have that kind of cloudy, foggy, way down, thick, gross, heavy feeling, and that can also be energetic phlegm buildup. So I absolutely love using fennel and lemon to cut through this. So if you have too much noise, you're eventually going to build up this energetic phlegm is my point. Okay, so you can cut through this with fennel and lemon, but if you don't have just fennel by itself, digestion is totally perfect. It's excellent. It's going to break down and dissolve and cut through the energetic phlegm. So we're going to apply it on the solar plexus. That's the core of the belly, um, also known as Ren 12 in Chinese medicine. And it does affect the spleen and the stomach. And the spleen and the stomach is part of the earth element. And what the spleen does when it's um, overloaded, 
it, it actually creates mucus and phlegm. And the spleen has this function actually of taking in information. So taking, it takes in food and then it organizes and distributes that information or food. So on a physical level, the stomach takes in the food, breaks it down initially, right? And then once it's broken down, the, the pure food chi goes to the spleen organ. And then the spleen takes that pure food chi and it turns it into blood. And not only does it turn it into blood, so something nutritive, right? And, um, and nourishes, it nourishes our cells and our tissues, our organs. So it takes, it turns it into blood and then it distributes, it transports that blood to where it needs to go. Oh, the heart needs some, the liver needs some, the kidney needs some, the tissues need some, right? The muscles. So it distributes it. So uh, when people are in school and they're learning new things a lot, right? When they learn a lot of new concepts, you're actually, they, we always say as an acupuncture student, oh my gosh, our spleens are just so shot. <laughs> we have our own lingo. <laughs> like, because we're memorizing, we're studying, we're learning, we're taking a new concept and constantly like trying to break it down and then distribute it where it needs to be and organize and file all this information and understand. So students tend to have very weak digestion because they study so hard. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So exactly. So um, with all of the stuff that's coming at us, we also have to organize it, right? We have to organize it. Thank you very much, Diane. Um, and so we're, uh, we're accessing, we are affecting the spleen and the stomach by putting the funnel on the solar plexus, um, right there, the funnel and lemon on the solar plexus. But not only are we going to do that, I also want you to inhale it for about three minutes. So you'll, that's very easy. Oh, by the way, solar plexus, it's the core of the belly. So when you are um, Chinese, but yes, yes. We're talking about Chinese medicine spleen, by the way. I'm talking Chinese medicine physiology, not Western medicine by any means. They do say that there is um, some theories is that the spleen is actually the pancreas. The spleen is the Western pancreas when they try to find some correlations. If you don't have a spleen, then it, you, this, you still have spleen meridian and the energy of the spleen is still there. But because it's been removed, you probably have a tendency towards stagnation or deficiency with the spleen. So you're going to want to support that area even more. So just right on the solar plexus, even more when you don't have a spleen, okay? Because it needs a bit more attention now. Um, so so that's about maybe three inches above the belly button. It kind of depends on how tall your torso is. But when you do abdominal crunches, that center point, that's right there. That is the solar plexus. So just put it right there. And you can diffuse this too. You can diffuse fennel and lemon or digestin and lemon in the diffuser for a few hours just to help cut through all of that energetic phlegm buildup. Okay? Very good. All right, so these were the two clearings, right? Now we're gonna go ahead and do some nourishing. We're gonna do turning up your truth. So now that we've cleared out that external noise that we've exposed ourselves to, um, and then we are cutting through all of that excess and that phlegm and also organizing all of the information that's coming in, and, and filtering out like what's nourishing and what's waste. Because what happens once the stomach sends some to the spleen, right, to turn it into blood and feed all of the tissues and the organs, and then some is dirty food chi, it's dirty chi, so it's gotta go downwards to the intestines. And so then the intestines release the waste. So essentially like that fennel and lemon is gonna help with that process so you can know what to extract as new nutrition and what to release as waste. So now second section is going to be the nourish. Number three is turning up your truth, turning up. So without all that excess, I was going to say, because I went on a tangent, without all that excess, you can actually hear yourself. You can hear your voice, not everybody else's opinions and ideas. And you know, opinions and ideas are great, but you need to make sure it matches 
with your constitution. If it doesn't match with your constitution, then it's toxicity. So you put lavender and Roman chamomile, these two oils, right on the heart space. And when I say heart space, it's right on the sternum between the breasts. Mm. Oh, a replacement for a lavender. Oh, that's really hard. Um, you could try clary sage if you have clary sage. Try clary sage, but I really, really like lavender. So please do get it if you don't have it, unless you're allergic to it. Um, Pettigrain would not be a replacement. It would that would be a different function. I know in Western uh, chemistry world that they have some similarities, but energetically they are very different plants. <laughs> very different plants and different effects. So lavender and Roman chamomile right on the heart space. So lavender has this wonderful way at just connecting to your essence and, and magnifying and turning the volume up on your essence. Okay. So I kind of, I wrote these cute little things like, like hone into your pleasures and play. This is important knowing what is pleasure and play for you and you operating there most of your day is where you're going to create the most expansion in your life. This is where you're going to turn up your magnetic field and you're going to be able to influence and affect and connect to more people. So you want to make sure you are prioritizing your play, prioritizing your pleasures because how, how do you expect to experience success and, and create the things you actually want if majority of your time you're doing things that are in opposition to your natural essence? Okay, That's just, it just doesn't work. The universe is quite ordered. It's quite ordered. You know, a tree is a tree. A bird is a bird, right? Water is water. They all play their parts fully and exceptionally well. A tree is not trying to be a rock, correct? A rock is not trying to be a tree. I know this sounds super silly, but <laughs> sometimes the simple things we don't do. So we want to own your desires. And so lavender and Roman, cam Roman chamomile, I love pairing with lavender for this. It almost, um, okay, I'm going to try to explain this the best way that I can. You know how when you look at a radio and some stations are like, like really staticky. And then as soon as you dial into the exact number, the correct number, then you clearly audibly hear the words, the music, the person talking or whatever is on that station. And so the Roman chamomile in a way enhances and makes that connection to yourself more crystal clear. So you're just tuned right in, okay? Tuned right into yourself. Um, <laughs> and oh, let me tell you the side thing that if you have a ton of noise, all right, if you have a ton of noise and you haven't done this clearing step yet, and then you put lavender on you, you know what you just did? You just turned up the volume of all of that noise. So all of the, oh, what are you doing with your life? You're so stupid. What are you wearing? Who does she think she is? You're not good enough. Like you just turned up the volume on that. So some of us don't like lavender and that's one of the reasons why. So one once you do the clearing step, right, then lavender is like your best friend. You really end up loving it. Okay. All right. Fantastic. So that's step three. Step four, this is the next step of your nourishing here. Okay. And then the last one's going to be harmonized. So this is vision and plan. Okay. So this is the visioning and the planning aspect. Um, you have a blueprint that's already done. It's already there. The only thing we need to do is access that blueprint. It's already available. That, that future that you want, it's already in the ethers. It's already in the field. It's just you tuning in, just like that radio station, tuning in right exactly to that plan. There is a dust in plan. And so I want to show you these two essential oils that help you to access it, access your destiny. And that's blue tansy 
and bergamot. This takes you into other realms, other dimensions where that future exists and it's going to bring it to the present. It has to be so bright. It has to be very vivid and it has to be very clear. So if you don't, again, do those prior steps, I wouldn't use the blue tansy. Maybe bergamot you can still use, but I wouldn't use blue tansy because it might um, make things worse, right? So yes, there is an intelligent way to use these essential oils. Now, if you don't have blue tansy, um, someone is asking if they don't have it, do you have blue lotus? Because blue lotus does this as well. If you got it from that precious florals package, oh, please go get it if you haven't gotten it yet. Um, yes, you. it won't stain your skin. You might see a little blue dot for you know a few minutes, but it will go away. And you don't have to put a whole bunch either. Just a nice thin layer. You can rub it in. You might not even see it if you just have a thin layer and rub it in. So we're going to apply um, both of these blue tansy and bergamot on the third eye as well as the back of the neck. So a drop of each blue tansy and bergamot. Now um, just warning, bergamot is photosensitive. So you don't want to go out in the sun and put a bergamot here and get that darker skin. So um, you can, if you know you're going to be outside in the sun, it is definitely spring, summertime, then just put it on the back of the neck if your hair is down, or, or you can just put it on the bottom of your big toe, okay, big toe, but I also, I also want to um, add one more location on the bottoms of the feet is the pinky toe. So in Chinese medicine, the occipital region is affected there. So just go to the bottom of the pinky toe as well. All right, this is Chinese medicine. So bottom of big toe, bottom of pinky toe, if you don't want to put it up here is my point. Uh, so you can also diffuse this. You can diffuse blue tansy and bergamot. So blue tansy helps you to really crystal clear, see and access that blueprint that is all yours, right? The plan that you are going to execute to get to complete the entire project, just like um, an architect creates the blueprint to build a house and then you have the whole team coming in to build the foundation and, you know, put, put up, do a stick build and put up the drywall. Like there are stages, there's step-by-step -step stages that you have to move through. And and I, that's something I'm a huge stickler on is making sure that you follow the sequence. The sequence, if there are 15 steps to your vision, please don't do step eight, <laughs> okay? Like go with step one first and then step two will be revealed. Sometimes people ask me like, okay, wait, I want to write a book, but I don't know about an editor. I don't have a publisher. I don't have da, da, da. You don't need to know anything about an editor or a publisher right now. All you got to do is write an outline. That's what you got to do. And then you got to write the chapters. That's first things first. Once you've completed that step, which could take you, you know, anywhere from two months to a year, then we can start having the discussion about the editor and the publisher and the printer and the vendor and all of that. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. I think, I think I explained everything on this vision and plan. Perfect. So blue tansy and bergamot and definitely diffuse. If you were to diffuse, I do about two blue tan tansy and three bergamot. Oh, I forgot about bergamot. There's one thing I was missing. So bergamot makes the dream possible. It gives it that feeling, right, and know-how that it can actually happen. Once you accept, there is a moment where you're like, I really think I can do this. When you experience that, and that's what Blue Tansy and Bergamot is going to help you do, then, then you're invincible. Then the excuses don't matter. You have to connect to that feeling that, oh, I think I can do this. I mean, when I wrote I Am Fabulous book, I'm sure some of you know about that. I had never written a book before that. I was horrible in English. I was criticized for my writing terribly in high school. I mean, it, it actually was painful for me because it was the one subject, I'm one of those like 4.2 GPAs kind of a student, but writing English was my 
hardest, hardest subject that just destroyed my, my self-esteem, actually. But you know what's so great about writing a book? You get an editor. <laughs> and the editor just fixes it all up. And then you're like, wow, I'm a really good writer. <laughs> oh, oh, and Boston, as you're on here, I did read your article. That was so stunningly beautiful, by the way. Please keep writing. Don't ever stop. Um, so, all right. So that's bergamot for you. Okay. So last step. Last step is calibrate. Oh, wow. I am definitely going the full hour. <laughs> last step is calibrate. Now, now that you have, you've cleared things out, right? And you are feeling more, um, certain and accurate about what you're supposed to do and what you want to create. Now, everyday decision making comes in, right? So this is calibration. This is tuning into those everyday moment by moment decisions that is going to keep you on track with your plan. So this is the like, okay, I'm sticking with it. Like, for example, I just started um, doing YouTube on a more serious level, meaning I'm creating videos that are formatted for YouTube and it's edited and all this stuff. And I, I did all the editing myself. And after about four videos, no, three videos, three or four videos, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't think I could do this anymore <laughs> because it's so much effort for me. Like it's fun, but it's, it's a lot of me because I'm doing things I never have done before. I'm like, I don't think I could do this. But, but then I use the marjoram, green mandarin, and cardamom, and it's like, um, you got to do this. Like this is, I'm all about being patient. I can be patient. It may take two or three years for me to grow my YouTube channel, but that's okay with me. I am patient. I'm, you know, I have that entrepreneurial mindset. I have the long game mind. And so I'm using this and I'm like, okay, no, I got to do it. So I took one week off thinking, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't do this. And then um, I did it yesterday and I, you know, actually hired someone to help me out and boom, like I, I'm back at it. Like I'm not quitting. I'm going forward with it. So the marjoram, green mandarin, cardamom kind of like gets you in the minutia of things, making sure that what you're doing, your, your behaviors, your actions, your choices, your decisions are continually in alignment and in resonance with your truth and with your essence. It's going to help you listen to your heart knowing. It's going to help you digest and break down any information coming at you. And, and it just, uh, you feel stronger using it. So I'm going to put it in a roller bottle blend for you. You can absolutely diffuse this as well. I would do about two drops each of marjoram, green mandarin, and cardamom. So in a 5 ml, you're going to do five drops each. Okay, 5 ml. You can double it for a 10 ml and do 10 drops each if you like. So marjoram, green mandarin, and cardamom, five of each in a 5 ml. Fill it with fractionated coconut oil, and you can put it on the inside of your wrist creases and on your heart space, so on the sternum between the breasts. And this is just going to continually harmonize you and make sure that you are always working in alignment with your truth with your essence. And when you work in alignment with your essence, I've had people advising me, Desiree, you should do this. Desiree, do that. Come do this with me. Like I get this all the time. And when I use my essential oils in this manner, I'm like, no, no, yes, no. Right. And I just, I just have a feeling. So when I was asked to do this um, presentation for you, it was an resounding yes within my heart and within my body. And so that's why I'm here, right? And so, so when you make decisions that are so in alignment with you, life is so much easier and things get clearer and clearer and your ability to create the changes you want is faster. It's fantastic. Okay. So there you have it. Yes, this is a five-step process. You can do it one after the other, okay? One after the other in one whole setting. Um, just even do it at the beginning of your day tomorrow and just watch. I promise you, you'll experience some sort of change. And I'm really excited to hear some of your stories with this. Okay, so if you have not seen any of my books and you are new, then 
I have a few of them, <laughs> whatever you like. And so I've got, I am fabulous. That was my first one. This is a recipe book of 45 blends. There is, a, and, and it's a wide variety. There's blends for your heart, blends for your mind, blends for inspiration, blends for love. So just there's 45 of them that you can choose. Um, if you want to, you can start with some of the clearing blends first, like release your fears and bye bye baggage before you go and use things like more than enough. And I love myself. Okay. So, I mean, the title kind of tells you still my mind, right? Release your fears. You'll know what is a clearing one. And then after that, you can follow up with a nourishing, harmonizing one. And just so you know that the uh, everything's in the book, but I say it can take anywhere from two weeks to six weeks for someone to experience transformation with the blend. Some people literally two weeks, that's all they need. And you'll know, you're like, oh, wow, it's different, right? I feel different. I'm acting different. My results are different. Then you know that you have completed that blend and you can move on to something else. I do have the next one called I Am Worthy. Um, yes, Monica, you can apply every day if you want. I don't think you'll need to, but you can. <laughs> um, I Am Worthy is a five-week journey of releasing shame and worthlessness, and then, of course, nourishing and harmonizing that sense of worthiness. And then the final book, Alanto, my husband and I, we wrote together. It's called I Am Magnetic, Feel and Grow Rich. And this is actually a money book, so dealing with your personal issues, beliefs, you know, energies around money, making sure we identify what category of money beliefs are your predominant ones. And then there's corresponding protocol. So it's kind of like you take a quiz there and then you find out what are your main money issues because everyone is a little bit different. And then you can um, customize your own treatment process based upon your um, the quiz. Okay. So there you go. There's I Am Magnetic and you can get those books at Oil Life. Absolutely. And you can find me at any of these social platforms. Um, so you can take a screenshot here if you want to hear more from me. I have a lot of blends and recipes on Instagram, um, diffuser blends and roller bottle blends and just some TCM lessons and stuff. Um, on Facebook, my business page where I do a lot of tutorials, like five minute videos on particular oils. It's at Desiree Fabulous Mangan Dog. On YouTube, this is my new thing I'm doing. So so please go check me out there. I just released a video today on um, about releasing toxic relationships. So that might be useful for you. And that's also just my name. And then I have a podcast called Fabulous and Free. And, um, and then there's my website as well. If you want to work with me privately or come to an event, um, you can check me out there. All right. So I think that's it on my end. I'm going to um, bring you up, Courtney. Well, actually, if there's any questions, I'm going to look through the questions. I'm going to stop the share and just take a look at the chats. And, oh, I'm so glad you all love this. You're so very welcome. Um, nourishing oils. So nourishing oils, I'll just say, if you don't remember anything, okay, this is, this is my workshops too, tea tree is like your core clearing essential oil tea tree and then frankincense is actually both nourishes and harmonizes it has both functions so if you don't know what to do you can just use tea tree and frankincense okay <laughs> and then um, i have workshops that deep dive more into that all right if you have any more questions please put it in the chats i am if i missed it put it in the chats again um oh releasing toxic relationships you can go to youtube youtube has the the new video up for that uh, very weepy. Okay. So Rachel's been weepy for the last four years. Never. Um, so you haven't been able to cry. Okay. Um, I'm going to recommend Rachel. You use two drops, okay, do it in this, in a diffuser. I want you to diffuse for a whole day. You can do it tomorrow is two drops of Siberian fur and then two cardamom. Okay. Two lemongrass. Do that. And then also use a lot of helichrysum and rose, a lot of helichrysum rose. So diffuse the 222 of Siberian for cardamom and lemongrass and put helichrysum and rose on the inside of your wrist creases. All right. And um, do, well, do the helichrysum and rose like maybe two times tomorrow and the other one diffuse all day. Um, especially when different decisions come out, should I switch blends when they do? Okay. So Emma is saying that sometimes she gets overwhelmed with which ones to use. I recommend sticking with one for at least two weeks. 
Okay. And, and you can, um, pick one that's like your main one. And if you want to like add another blend, you can use up to three blends, by the way. I, I say you can use up to three blends at a time in the I'm Fabulous book. So you can have one core one that you're working on. And then if there's another blend you want to add, like you can use for that day or a couple of days because of a situation came up and you can work it this way. Um, oh, you're so sweet, Amy. <laughs> Okay, may I ask about the Brave New World? world? Yes, yes, um, the Brave New World blend. Yeah, uh, for you, Barbara, I actually like it on the back of the neck and then the inside of the elbow creases would be a great location. Um, tension in the solar plexus, yes. Um, add some lemongrass, Monica, to your solar plexus. Okay, oh, okay, great. Um, how many drops of blue tansy and bergamot in the diffuser? Do two drops of blue tansy and three drops of bergamot. Thank you, Carson. <laughs> okay, what did you say about Siberian fur? Oh, this was a blend specifically for, um, I think it was Rachel. So Siberian fur and cardamom and lemongrass. Okay, can you ever apply oils incorrectly onto pressure points, meaning can it have a negative effect? Yes, it can. It can. And it just, you know, it depends on the person, the constitution. Um, but you know what, with that being said, with that being said, what's really important is that you trust yourself. You have to listen and trust yourself. And if something feels good to apply at a particular place, then you do it because then that's right. Then that's right. So I don't want to ever um, have someone feel heady and overwhelmed and think you need a degree to properly use these things. No, no. Just like a mama knows how to take care of their child. I, I deeply, firmly believe that you know what to do. And you know what? You just put it on and then see what happens. If you feel like there's a negative effect, then you'll also know that and you won't do it anymore. Um, if I'm in the middle of I am magnetic, should I wait to use this protocol? No, you don't need to wait. You can add it to it. Okay. It's, it's gentle enough and it's powerful enough. So do you have specific protocols that relate to human design? Great question. I am not a human design expert, so um, I would have to dive into it and understand it. I know I could definitely create protocols towards it. I'm actually learning Vedic astrology right now, and so I'm, I'm a little bit knee deep in that, but maybe one day I will um, go into human design. Oh, that's my baby. Sorry about that. Um, Laura, yes very possible. Don't apply oils there. Is she outside the door? Oh yeah, she's outside the door. She's, that's my little one-year-old. <laughs> um, so yes, any tips for that? Make sure you do like an Epsom salt uh, foot soak. I highly recommend that. All right. Yes, you can be journaling. Absolutely. Amy asks, can you journal during this? You can absolutely journal. Do you want to get clarity on a relationship that's right for you? Um, yes, I do. So Nicole, I'm just going to do a quickie. Um, I'll show the, the first protocol, Debbie, by the way. Oh my gosh, should I go get her? Let me go. Let me go get her. We're going to bring her into this. So. No, not yet. Are you able to take care of her, honey? She really wants you. Okay, go ahead and bring her. Go ahead and bring her. Oh, uh, the door's locked. I have to unlock it. One sec. Oh, sorry. Oh. My son took her, so we're good. All right. My husband literally, um, 30 minutes before we started, was like, I'm going to go to a men's night. I'm like, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> so I have my my son's taking care of. Okay, come here, Ayla. There we go. Come here. Come here, baby girl. Okay, Sue. Mm, come here. Come here. She's going to join us for a little bit. There's Ayla, girl. This is Ayla. Um, there was one question that I did not finish answering. Oh, the clarity on if a relationship is right for you. Watch that toxic relationship video. Pedigree. It's all about pedigree. So watch that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and show you the first protocol someone asked me. Um, share screen. Oops, oops, oops. Share. There it is. Okay. So I'm gonna go back up. 
it was clear the noise right here. N-O-O-A. Oh, yes. ABC? Hey. Oh, they're all saying hello, Ava. Hello. Oh, oh, my God, that's so cute. <laughs> you are so cute. Yes, you are. <laughs> cool. Okay, yeah. Debbie got it. Awesome. Any other questions? We got another minute. She is adorable. <laughs> You're getting a lot of hellos. Um, oh, will this be a new book? Mm, I don't have this as a new book. Um, however, I am right. I actually started, no joke, today writing Elements of Emotion, which is my next book that I'm writing. I am aiming for, I'm aiming for September, but if not, you know, it'll definitely be by the end of this year for sure. Um, I am going to make it as comprehensive as possible. So, so yes, Elements of Emotion is on the way. Um, if you're applying two oils somewhere as part of today's protocol, is it better to blend them first or apply one after the other? So you can um, put them together. Oh, yeah, you want water? Okay, okay. Yeah, you can put them together and then apply. Great, awesome. All right, well, um, Courtney, I'm going to stop the share. And did you want to say anything um, to the group? Let's see. There we go. Oh, I'm welcome to end? Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, um, thank you so much, everyone. Oh, here we go. Water, water. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining me. This was super fun. I absolutely love hanging out with you. It was actually quite exhilarating. And um, uh, please do share with me any experiences you have. I always welcome testimonials. Um, you can write, well, you can contact me through my website, DesireeMangandog.com as well. All right. Well, you all have a wonderful evening evening or really late at night, wherever you're from. And, and take care and enjoy and be safe and healthy. I love you all and happy oiling. Bye, everybody. Bye. Say bye, Ayla. Say bye-bye. Yay. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, so cute. <laughs> Ayla, you stole the show. <laughs>